not outright sin. See what the Bible said in Galatians chapter 6, I read verse 1. Galatians chapter 6, I read verse 1. Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a what? In a fault. Ye which are spiritual, restores us a one in the spirit of what? Meekness, not condemnation. Considering thyself, let thou also be what? Be tempted. Be a ye one another's body, and so fulfill the law of Christ. If just ordinary fault, you can just rebuke and correct and bring the person back to the pathway of righteousness, whether a worker or a member. However, there are some things that just require just rebuke. And rebuke can be classified into two. Ordinary rebuke and sharp rebuke. It may be ordinary if that what the person has done is not worthy, not so strong, not so big. You can just rebuke. And we have read the passage. See what the Bible says in Second Timothy again, chapter 4. We have read chapter 3 the other time. Let's look at chapter 4. I read from verse 2. Preach the word. Be instant in ceasing. Out of ceasing. Do what? Rebuke. Sorry. Reproof. Rebuke. Exhort. With all long suffering. And what? And doctrine. The most difficult aspect of ministry for a pastor is the issue of discipline. But we are commanded to do it. So there are some rebuke that just light rebuke. This what we have done is not good. And it may not require that we tell the person to abandon the work that the person is doing. Take for instance now, somebody who is absent himself from choir practice. First time, second time, you can rebuke the person. Yesterday, during the workers' meeting, all our leaders that didn't attend leaders' meeting, that's part of rebuke. But light rebuke. But our attitude to it, we now tell whether we receive that rebuke joyfully or not. We even determine the state of your heart. Let me give you a particular example. Yesterday, after workers' meeting, our pastor sitting by my left hand side, he came to me here. He said, Pastor, I'm very sorry. It was because of this, because of this, because of this. That is what you call Christianity. And as I was standing there discussing with one of our associate coordinators, another brother came and apologized. That is what you call Christianity. But if you are the one, you feel that, how can pastor be talking about me? Who are you? If not because of the privilege, you have to be a region coordinator. After all, I'm here. You may not speak it out. I'm a child of God. I have the spirit of God. I discern what is going on. And see what will be going on in your heart. It means that you are a backslider. Something is wrong. That is what you call rebuke. Just light rebuke. But there are some rebuke that are so sharp. See what the Bible says in Titus. Titus, that's after Second Timothy. Titus chapter chapter one. Titus chapter one. I read from verse thirteen. This witness is true. Wherefore rebuke them what sharply. And who are those people who are preaching error? You don't glorify it. And that error can be classified into two. If just a doctrinal misstatement, not intentional, you rebuild the person sharply. But if it is intentional, it goes beyond rebuke, you know, sharply. You have to withdraw the service from that person. That person cannot be in that position. He will corrupt the church. That one now higher. Ordinary rebuke, sharp rebuke, then open rebuke. 
See what the Bible says. But before I leave sharp rebuke, control your Bible to Galatians chapter 2. I read verse 11. Galatians chapter 2. I read verse 11. Galatians chapter 2. I read verse 11. But when Peter was come to Antioch, I withstood him to the face because he was to be blamed. For before that certain came from James, he did eat with the Gentiles. But when they were come, he withdrew and separated himself, fearing them which were of the circumcision. And the other Jews dissembled, dissembled likewise with him, in so much that Barnabas also was carried away with their dissimulation. But when I saw that they walked not uprightly, according to the truth of the gospel, I said unto, unto Peter, Before them all, if thou be a Jew, live it after the manner of Gentiles, and not as do the Jews, wise compelled thou the Gentile to live as do the Jews. You can see here how Paul the apostle, the youngest, that came last, he rebuked Peter. He said, before all, that sharp rebuke. Not that they have committed fornication or adultery now. Because he's trying to cause a kind of division among the people. When he saw them, he now withdrew. And he was eating with them before. But the question is this. How did Peter take that rebuke? If you go to the epistle of Peter, he was still referring to Paul as what? Brother. Can you do that? Like the example I gave here just happened yesterday. And that will tell you the state of the heart. Contrite art, simple art, humble art, holy art, heart of flesh that is ready to take rebuke from anywhere. In fact, when we talk about seniority, who is Peter? Beside Paul. Paul, among the three that were very close to Christ. Who witnessed all the miracles? He was among the people on the Mount of Transfiguration. And you can see here, just a little fault, a little error, a little problem. And Paul rebuked him. And Peter didn't say, by the way, I was in the ministry before you came in. Who are you? Let us be careful of pride when your leader rebukes you. Even the, the, your, your posture, the way you talk, He's speaking. Actions speak louder than voice. And Peter didn't say anything. Can you see that kind of sharp what? Sharp, uh, uh, sharp rebuke. I pray that God of heaven will help us to accommodate all this thing in Jesus' name. Not only that, sharp rebuke in First uh, Second Timothy. Sorry, Titus chapter two. Let me read verse fifteen. Titus chapter two. Let me read verse 15. The person may be a member, may be a worker, ordinary rebuke, you have to do it. Sharp rebuke, you have to carry it out. Titus chapter 2, verse 15. Verse 15. These things speak and exalt and do what? You know, there are some people they will say, Pastor, you are too harsh. Why is it that you are rebuking everybody? That is part of our ministry. We have to do it. If we remove it, God is going to judge us. And if you are a minister, you are afraid to rebuke. Maybe because of personality, the congregation. And many churches today, they can't rebuke because the man himself, he has skeleton in his combat, not living right. You can't remove much from another person's eyes. When much is already there in your own eyes. You can see here, this is make and exhort and rebuke with all authority. Let no man despise thee. You know, there may be sharp rebuke. Then number three, there may be open rebuke. Especially for public sin. That's what happened in the passage you have read. First Timothy chapter 5. The 
before I go to that one, let's read First Timothy chapter five. I read verse twenty. However, when they bring an information to you, investigate. Don't just jump into conclusion. If not, you will go and be resuscitated again. Don't just jump into conclusion. Investigate the matter, especially when it involves sin. Open scandal. Whether a worker or a member, and in your home, your deeper life is now a loving, uh, loving uh, matter. If the person is a worker, we have to do it openly. See what the Bible says. Let me read verse 19. Against another, receive not an accusation, but before two or three witnesses, them that see, do what? Rebuke before many people. Oh, that others also may do what? May fear. There are some things that call for open rebuke before all. And I've witnessed it in the church. It won't cover sin. And I did it among the workers. I think at the beginning of, maybe, I don't know, maybe about two months ago here, when I heard about one young uh, person here, happened to be a worker, and they have known each other. Their parents have both deeper life at home in Lagos. This one was, it was given admission, the other lady given admission. When he got to that uh, place, no, that's a foreign link. He decided not to associate with deeper life campus fellowship. She joined Redeem. The other one here. They were boyfriend before. He gave his life to Christ during a pre degree and now secure admission. In one way or another, the connection came back again. And he left here, visited her there. He said the brother is not around. The so called jellyfish, backslider, come and sleep in my house. That's how they committed immorality the first day, the second day. And I call the workers. Already some of you know about it. Once one, two or three people knows about a particular sin, it becomes a public sin. Don't cover it up. I asked him to come forward. He refused. He's still outside there. Goat. And the thing was now talk of town in their district in Lagos. And it doesn't matter. Whether the person is a son or a daughter of an overseer or sin is sin. You discipline. Openly. And that is what happened to the Corinthian church. Look at the passage we have read. First Corinthians chapter 5 verse 2. And ye have performed and have not rather more that he that has done this deed might be taken away from among you. Verse 13. But then that without God judge. Therefore, put away from among yourself that wicked person. Then, I was, I, I, that is what you call outright excommunication. That's another level of discipline. When somebody gets to a point, the person is not so you know, in penitent disposition. Now addicted to it. Ah, we can't continue. But I can't mess up out that discipline. I'm not qualified. Region of Asia cannot do it. State of Asia cannot do it. It's only the general superintendent that can do it. And I've witnessed one before. And GS sent the message to Ibadan, to Ife, that is who are And it was during the retreat. I pray that nobody will get to that point. That is another measure of what? Discipline. When it gets to a point that, a point of no return. See the example. First Timothy chapter 1. I've given you this one now. Who is committing morality with the wife of his father. What unbeliever cannot even do. And no remorse. And he was sitting there. Maybe among the choir. I don't know the work, the kind of work he was doing. Or another, or three work. Or maybe the secretary. Or whatsoever. 
and the other people, the leaders there, also they pass him at the back. Continue. He that covereth his sin shall not prosper. In First Timothy, I read from verse eighteen. First Timothy chapter one. Let me read verse eighteen. You know, you say I'm taking time. I need to take time, please. Verse eighteen to twenty. First Timothy one verse eighteen. This charge I commit unto thee, son Timothy, according to the prophecy which went before on thee, that thou by them mightest war a good warfare, holding faith and a good conscience, which some have put away concerning faith, have made shipwreck, of whom is Enamos and Alexander, whom I have delivered unto who? To Satan. That they may learn not to blaspheme. That is excommunication. And you are here this morning. You know the church is free entry. Free exit. You are committing sin secretly. And you don't know. And we don't know. Your sin will find you out one day. And if you are there, you know this person is not living right. And you keep quiet. I don't want to talk. Oh, so that we not say that it's me that reported her or reported him. You are partaking of that iniquity. Because part of your question. In the secret, we are told that God has made us a wash man. This is spiritual history. All of us that are here. You are a worse man, no father, brother, no father, sister by your side. And you know that this person is going to air fire. And you say, I don't want to tell people. And you keep quiet. You know what the Bible says? If that person died, his blood shall be required from your hand. Come and tell us. We will investigate. And the essence of discipline is not just to condemn the essence is to restore you unto God. Discipline itself may not be pleasant, but it has the power to make us what God wants us to be. If you take it kindly, Peter took it kindly. Several times, Jesus Christ rebuked his disciple. Am I right? There was a time Christ says, I'm going to Jerusalem, I'm going to die, I'm going to do this. Peter said, God forbid. No, you will not die. And Jesus Christ turned back and said, Satan, Get behind me. If you are the one, associate coordinator that are here this morning, what are you going to tell me? He said, Pastor, we draw that statement. Even if you don't say it, your attitude is <laughs> saying it. May we thank God for people who have the spirit of Christ. Peter didn't say, Are you talking to me like that? After all, you are the one you met me where I was doing my fishing and you asked me to follow you. If that is the case, we will. Peter he didn't do that. God will help us. We will get to a phone in Jesus' name. I believe I've answered your question. Yes. The next person. Good morning, sir. Good morning. And if I've answered your question, you are you are sitting down there, you can leave. Um from first Corinthians five five. Wait, first Corinthians. First Corinthians chapter 5, verse 5. Go ahead. He reads, To deliver such an one unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh, that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Now, from my understanding of this scripture, if um, this, to discipline, you deliver such an one unto Satan. Now, when you discipline an individual, what are measures put in place to restore one? Because I've seen some cases in which when the individual is disciplined, the person becomes, I've seen some cases in which the person becomes extremely worse than he or she was even before um, the discipline um, started. So what are the measures? Because the person is, the, the, the reason for discipline is to restore the individual back to the Lord. So what are measures put in place to ensure that the individual is restored? It's okay. God bless you, my sister. This fast is not talking about 
termination of life of that individual. If that is the case, Christ will not put it there that the spirit may be saved in the day of what? Of the Lord Jesus Christ. What the Bible is saying here is the destruction of the physical appetite. Physical appetite. And I will give you a particular example. How can we help the people? But before I tell you how we help the people, let me give you another passage in the Bible. What happened? Because we're thinking that maybe Paul is saying that uh, let the person go and die. No. Destruction of the flesh is talking about the destruction of the physical appetite. That the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus Christ. Though we are not told here the mechanism they are going to use. But there's another particular example. Paul the apostle wrote the same epistle to this uh, particular church. Second Corinthians chapter 2. Second Corinthians chapter 2. Second Corinthians chapter 2. Let me read from verse 1. Second Corinthians chapter 2. Let me read from verse 1. But I determined this with myself that I will not come again to you in heaviness. For if I make you sorry, who is he then that make me glad? But the same which is which, which is made sorry by me. And I wrote this same unto you less when I came. I shall have sorrow from them of whom I ought to rejoice, having confidence in you all, that my joy is the joy of you all. For out of much affliction and anguish of heart, I wrote unto you with many tears, not that ye should be grieved, but that ye might know the love which I have more abundantly unto you. But if any have caused grief, and he has not grieved me, but in part, that I may not overcharge you all. Sufficient to source a man is this punishment, which was inflicted of many. That's talking about somebody who was disciplined. Because of one reason or the other. Cry Paul the Apostle is now telling them what to do. Verse 7. So that contrawise, ye ought rather to do what? To forgive him and comfort him after the person has shown remorse, repentant acts, sorrowful over that evil act. And he has come and says, Pastor, I've met with God, I've no forsaken it. God has pardoned me. I now realize that this thing I've done is wrong. Let's perhaps trust a one should be swallowed up with what? Over much sorrow. If somebody is disciplined, and you can see a sense of remorse, repentance, he has prayed, and see soberness and willingness to come to Christ, not somebody after discipline. And the person says, Uh huh. You discipline me. Away with your fellowship. And the person, if he likes, he will come for Monday Bible study. Sunday worship, maybe once in a month. Is that repentance? Or the person just looked down. Is that what you are going to do? Uh, I'm going to another fellowship. Is that repentance? But if you can see soberness, and this is what Paul is saying, don't now drive away the person through your attitude, through your behavior. I said, I don't want to have anything to do. No matter how far the one has gone, if the person can still come back, Christ will receive the person. And Paul was saying here, Wherefore, I beseech you that you will confirm your love towards him. I'm talking about the one who repented sincerely. For those to this end also did I write that I might know the proof of you, whether ye be obedient in all things to whom ye forgive. Anything I forgive also. For if I forgave anything to whom I forgave it, for your sake forgave I it in the person of Christ. Let Satan to get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. Everybody look up. The mistake we always make is this. Even if it is outright sin of fornication or adultery, our focus is on the victim. 
the personality behind the victim, we forget about it. And our attitude to that person, we even make Satan to be rejoicing. That doesn't mean when and that some people also in the church, instead of allowing a disciplined person to repent, they'll be going to him. What did you do that pastor disciplined you? And just because of this, just because of this, I did this one, and then we committed him. I committed immorality. And then, how many months pastor has this been? Three months. I don't know what is happening to our pastor. It's not merciful. Uh -uh. After three months, and you are the one you have the gift, you can sing. I remember the revival hour you handled last uh, about four months ago. Everybody was praying, praying in the midst of immorality. Well, God will help our pastor. You are not helping that individual. When pastor rebuke and you get to your where you don't always meet, hey, brethren, be careful. The state of your heart when rapture takes place <laughs> will determine where you are going to spend eternity. And the state of your heart when death comes will determine where you are going to spend eternity. And carelessly, you will not even allow that person to realize the consequence of his sin. We should deceive from that as a, as a, as a, as a member. It may, person may be your tight friend. It doesn't matter. The Bible says we should not keep company. If you read that passage, don't keep company with that individual. Look at it in the First Corinthians chapter 5. May not be this passage. Don't keep company with them. But as a pastor, our desire is that we want that person to be restored. It's the duty of the pastor. The pastor can call the person once in a while. How far? And the pastor will be watching whether the person is consistent in the fellowship. That was the time I disciplined a coordinator last administration. I only told the GC, I didn't make it open. And I told the GC, be helping me, monitoring him. Monday Bible study, Thursday, the five hour, Sunday worship. And the brother was consistent. And after a while, I lifted up the discipline. That is our duty. The ultimate goal of discipline is to revive you. Is to bring you back to the pathway of righteousness. You know, there are some passage, passages where the Bible says, don't keep company with them, don't hit with them. That's talking about those who are heretic. False teachers. That person should not be your friend. Don't keep company with that person. And once we know that person, we will bring the person openly. There's one of them who started one group last year and they have started again. Instead of going and there's nothing wrong if you want to establish your ministry. Ministry that we now that we not allow students to write tests to attend lecture. They will go for evangelism here and there with a lot of atrocity and they are reading different kind of books. If you talk to them like this, the world will enter here and pass through the second year. I saw the person, one of the Monday Bible study, I came here, I called him out. I said, you people, I told you last year, when I saw you in front of Africa, in first, uh, first bank uh, building. So this is your activity, you are still doing it. The church is free. You are free to come here. If you people want to establish ministry, go and establish it. And they, be, they won't look for members. It's workers. They are looking for those who they don't have a backbone. They don't know where they are going. One week, they will miss lecture, miss test. People like that, you have to cut away. Don't keep company with them. And God of heaven will help us in Jesus' name. I don't know whether I've answered your question, my sister. See what the Bible says in 2 Thessalonians chapter 3. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3. Turn your Bible there. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 14. And if any man obey not our word, this doctrine, doctrine of, of holiness, by this epistle, note that man, regardless of that person, his position, even in the church, and have no company with him, that he may be ashamed. However, that's your attitude. Yet, count him not as an enemy, but admonish him as a what? As a brother. 
that is how far you can go. The essence is to restore. And somebody has a question about Meso Yuka. The day I preached a message on Christian dressing, if that sister is there, please, it's just for illustration, and I cannot even remember your name. And she came up here for counseling. She was trembling. Trembling. I said, what is the problem? Almost crying. She said, I fell into sin of immorality. How did it happen? And he told me in the instances. But at the end of the day, know that they went to bed. She left her house here, in you know, her room here. I don't want to mention the hall. To go and meet a non believer. In the same department, but the other one is in part five. She is in part one or part two. And she did it twice. She said that she, that man kissed her. Her sense is then she has lost her peace. And I knew this person, she wanted to get to her food. And it's my duty as a pastor to help her. And I asked her, how did you even know her? Hey, she is not a member of the church. Even if the member of the church, what they have done is wrong. How did, how come? He said that before she secured admission, she met her, him on the Facebook. When the person was doing posting, uh, he listened there. Wesley, in Wesley or speech. And there are some of you. What are the things inside your web? Facebook. Inbox. All the social network. Even maybe you are here, you are in courtship. And you have perfected everything on the Facebook. Before you come to me, it's the will of God. No problem. Go ahead. You are building the foundation of your marriage of falsehood. So the person I asked her, are you a worker? She said, no. She's a member. And I said, there's no problem. I cancelled her. I prayed with her. And I did a sister with her connector and the financial connector to her. That is my duty as a pastor. Have I answered your question, my sister? God bless you. The next person. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Although my question has been partly answered. Partly answered. It's okay. Concerning the issue of excommunication as a measure of discipline, mm -hmm. since the purpose of discipline is to bring the person back to Christ, but someone that has been excommunicated, how can such a person be brought back to Christ? Because to the best of my knowledge, I think excommunication is sending the person away from the church totally. So someone that has been excommunicated, how can such a person be helped? Thank you, my brother. That is why I told you it's not a thing that I can do. And if you now get to a point, general coordinator cannot resolve an issue. <laughs> cannot help you. House coordinator cannot help you. Regional coordinator cannot help you. Region Ufasia cannot help you. State Ufasia cannot help you to the extent that they will now take your case. To general superintendent, are you true, my brother? Imagine your heart. If the case gets to a point like that, because no other person has the power to carry out his communication in the church, only the general superintendent. However, we are free more hygiene. He has power to choose. In fact, the one that I'm, I'm talking about, that will be the, I think that will be the first one. If I may not be wrong. I may be wrong anyway. I came to the church December 1984. But that's the only one I witnessed. Years later, I asked the brethren in the bottom, how far about this person? And someone told me that he saw the person in the retreat. The retreat is a public uh, something. The person can still come back to Christ. But, but you know, it goes beyond for if this other thing we have mentioned. That is the state of apostasy. Point of no return. This is what I'm going to do. G.S. Shut up your mouth. Before G.S. carried it out, he was invited. Ah, my brother, close that chapter. 
I pray it will not happen to you. And I don't want to go into detail what the person did. I, 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 I got information. But it's not my duty to talk about it here. Is that okay? So don't proceed to that point. When now get to a point that you are not under the control. At the state of I put apostasy. See what the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 6. I read from verse 4. For it is impossible for those who are once enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gifts. Heavenly gift. Salvation. Sanctification. Holy Ghost baptism. Spiritual gift. Ministry. And were made partakers of the Holy Ghost. And have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the world to come if they shall fall away to renew them again unto repentance. See, they crucify to themselves the Son of God afresh and put him to an open shame. Ah, if somebody get to that this point, I mean, if somebody was. Who had tasted the goodness of God, the gift of God, Holy Ghost baptism, mightily used. And I said, Who is Christ? I don't know to even hear his name. Who is Holy Spirit? I don't know him. All these salvation holiness they are talking about, I don't think it's real. Ah, that is beyond ordinary, my brother. Is that taken? Don't damn point to that. Ask God to keep you rapturable. Is that taken? The next person. Good morning, sir. Good morning. So I want some more clarification on these two questions. The first one is in the church. Is there a length of time, or let me say a deadline, for discipline, or until the Lord leads it in the heart of the leader? And the number two question is that to do what? To bring that person back to the to, to relieve the discipline, yes. it's okay. And number two is that I want to I want to know more about the difference between if there's any difference between suspension and discipline in the church. It's okay. Thank you. Suspensions just mean that we are withdrawing whatever you are doing. It's a measure of discipline. Is that okay? It's like if I call it and you are not living right. We are preaching and preaching and preaching and preaching. And you are a mood and you are a worker is a leader. And let me tell you, unbelievers are not reading the Bible, they are reading our lives. That is why that song says, Does your life point them to Christ? So if I call this and we know that you are not living right, you are still watching movies, you are still decorating your body. And you are leading other people to do it. We will put you on discipline. And at the same time, be watching whether this person is going to change. And if we don't see any signs of repentance, we won't lift up the discipline. But at the same time, we call you. Say, what are you doing? Are you living your life? You may not see me physically. I will send leaders to you. And if you are the one, after that, you are see you are the one accommodating boyfriends from fine pan to fire. Are we going to ask the person to come and take up the work again? Impossible. Now, how long? The person discipline is the determinant factor. If the person is sober, and the person didn't say, who is he? Discipline me. I can't take that rebuke. I've not done anything wrong. We will leave him alone. We will be praying for him. Or praying for her. But if the people can see a sign of repentance, genuine repentance, not like the kind of uh, repentance of uh, Judas Iscariot, he was just regretting what he did. The worst part of it, he hung himself. Another thing. And from there to her, his master is there in Nephew. He himself is in her. So it's the person that will determine. But as a leader, We'll be checking up.
call the person, how far was your spiritual life? Say, Pastor, I'm okay now. I realized that what I did was wrong. And by the grace of God, I've settled the matter with God. Period. My brother, it can be one week, it can be one month, it can be two months. However, it can be one year, depending on that person. Let me give you a particular example. Somebody brought a case to the pastor. He said that we saw Brother Swazu. He was trying to rough and do a woman, his sister. And he brought the case to GS. And this is a respected person, very no, a worker. And pastor sent for him. He said, I had this report that you are trying to rough and do this person. You wanted to commit immorality with her. He said, Pastor, you don't know me. Uh -uh. Even if they bring that kind of report to you, why do you believe it? She has demon. I didn't do it. He said, Pastor said, well, there's no problem. Stop the work you are Go and pray. Three months later, he came to Pastor. He said, Pastor, I didn't do it. You should trust me. For all these years we have been together in Lagos. I didn't do it. Pastor said, Go and pray. A year, sorry, six months later, he came. He said, Pastor, I didn't do it. Trust me. Pastor said, No, go and pray. You know, at a time you feel that your leader is tough, too strict. You know, if you are looking for liberal gospel, not here. And as some of you that have been saying, yeah, so we have been in bondage for a long years like this. You are looking for freedom. Go outside. There are many pseudo gospels there. Gospel of peace, not gospel of force. I can do anything. In fact, on the day of my wedding, I will do this. I will do that. Go ahead. When you get to the gate of air, you will remember the message here. You are looking for freedom? Pastor said, No. Go and pray. After a year, he came back. Pastor said, Go and pray. Three years. He came back to Pastor. He said, Pastor, I'm very sorry. I did it. The Bible says the heart is deceitful and desperately wicked. Who can know it? It's only God. And if you are there, you say, Pastor, ah, three years. That's too long. Restore him. Restore him. Backslider. See what the Bible says. I need, I think, Ecclesiastes chapter 9. Turn your Bible there. Ecclesiastes chapter 9. See, chapter 9 or 22. No, not Ecclesiastes. I think Proverb. Proverb 22. Where the Bible says, a backslider. I can't remember the. I can't remember the. I think 14, verse 14. Proverb 14, verse 14. See it there. 14, verse 14. Are you there? The backslider in heart. Underline it in your Bible. So I'll be filled with his own what? Own ways. And a good man shall be satisfied from himself. A backslider in art. You know that some people, when you look at the appearance, you will say this is deeper life number one. Uh, but in the heart, is a backslider. He has gone far away. Especially brothers. It takes years before they can change. We are already addicted to this kind of dressing. And this kind of normal life. Even when the person has gone away five years back, you won't know because you are looking at the outward appearance. But in the heart, he is filled with his own way. After three years, he came to Pastor and Pastor said, He said, I'm, I did it, sir. I'm very sorry. And Pastor said, Go back to your work. Have I answered your question, my brother? Now, when pastor eventually they transferred him from legal state to another state, and pastor was doing a miracle crusade from one state to another state, he now went to that state. After the administration, people were coming to greet pastor, and eventually that brother came. Ah, ah, brother so -and -so, how are you? What are you doing here? That is why, as a pastor, after lifting the discipline, you see the person as if he has never done that hard evil before. And you give him free hand to operate. 
You also, as a person, hey, you are also here. You have not gone to that place ever. And I pray that, Pastor, I pray for myself. I will not discipline someone that God has forgiven. Because out of sea. And as a pastor, you don't discipline because you have something against that person. And I will prove to him, God is looking at your heart. You are trying to retaliate because the person despises you. Or disrespects you. And you say, what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to discipline him. Any heart like that, God of heaven, he knows what is going on in your heart. And pastor asked him, by the way, what are you doing here? Are you, what, which area of work are you working? He said, you didn't give me any work. Ah. He didn't give you any work. In personal sense for the state of Asia. Come. This is our brother. He's from Lagos. He's a wonderful brother. I, he told me that you didn't give him any work. And the state of Asia looked at him. Ah. Bro, you didn't tell pastor what you did. Pastor said, what happened? Said, we caught him with a woman. Again. So, when the leadership of the church said, this is what you are doing. If you don't even know the background behind it, keep short. Your mouth short. Don't talk. So, the person is a determinant factor. It can be one week, it can be one. Just say, go and sit down. It may even be one week. Is that taken? I don't know whether I've answered your prayer, your question. No prayer, question. Praise the Lord. The next person. Mm, sir, you've answered part of the question I was to ask, but sir, in the First Corinthians chapter five, verse five. Let me open, please. First Corinthians chapter five, verse five. Yes. It is to deliver such an one unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh, that the spirit may, may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. So I want to ask, how? Does one deliver someone to Satan for destruction of the flesh? You said the um, destruction of the flesh is physical appetite. So how does one um, judge now deliver someone to Satan? Thank you. You know this the sin that this person committed goes beyond even what what even what believer cannot even do. If I answer your question, everybody look. Look at that first one. It is reported commonly that there is a fornication among you. So fornication is not so much as named among the Gentiles that one should have his father's wife. His father's wife. Abomination of the highest order. And Paul's apostles this one, this sin, you cannot even find it among unbelievers, Gentiles. And you did it. And he are puffed up and have not rather the more that he, he that has done this deed might be taken away from among you. This is where I'm going. If you go to Leviticus chapter 18, start reading from verse 8. In fact, read the whole chapter. If you are here this morning, at this age, you are mature. You know all these unbelievers, you will see a boy and a girl living together at the road, Koyo side. I'm not talking about our church there. I'm talking about all these Aserifa. That's the way they are living. Abomination. And if you call yourself a brother, and you have your younger sister here, the same father, the same mother, and you say, I have accommodation somewhere. And you accommodated your sister. And the two of you are living the same rule. Even far back at all. Go and read that passage. That you should not behold the nakedness of your sister. Go and read it. Time will not permit us. Incense. Go beyond for the case and adultery. And you are here, you are living like that. And at times we want to help you. You say no. Uh -uh. 
evil unbeliever in that house. What are you going to prove to them? That is my sister. Mature people. You know, the all our children in primary school, primary one, kindergarten, you know, they sleep in the room. Nobody care about that. A close relative. And you are behind the nakedness of that so called sister. Of that so called brother. And you say, you say, because they are the same father and mother. And as some people, they will say, eh, it's the daughter of my eh, junior brother to my father. My nephew, my cousin. It's abomination. Now, can you now look at it for somebody who have been taught the word of God? Go and read Leviticus chapter 18. In fact, specifically verse 8, address this one. But when you read further, we now see sis, uh, this, your sister of the same blood. Bible, that's the way the Bible put it. Of this, your mother. And there's nothing going wrong. Uh, and you are destroying gospel. And you are still carrying Bible. You are coming to the church like this. Abomination of the highest order. This case is excommunication. And I told you, since the time I have spent, I don't know, number of years now, close to 30 years in the ministry, I only witnessed it once. When we say we deliver somebody to Satan, if you look at the word of life we are hearing here, my brother, if you don't eat food, just for two days, not that we are fasting, what do you think will happen to you? You are not fasting, but no food to eat, no water to drink. Before you know it, your body, physical body now will be depreciating. It will be growing linear and linear every, every hour. Now, if you extend it to three days, four days, what do you think will happen? That is physical food. What about spiritual food that we are feeding ourselves with air? And they now say, go out of this church, deeper life, deeper Christian life ministry. Monday Bible study, you won't hear. Thursday, the five hour, you won't hear anything. Sunday worship, you won't hear. Maybe you are a chorister, you can't be among your people, your brethren, you can't sing again. Maybe you are a whole worker, you are not doing anything. Don't go and experiment it too. Just in two weeks, if you miss two weeks fellowship, you yourself you will feel that there is something out of you. It's like a fish out of the water. That one is even more than delivering somebody to, 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 to Satan. So when the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, to deliver us a one unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh, maybe this person, when he leave the church, don't be a pollutant here. And it's not a common thing to excommunicate. It's not common. That is the last resort. You know, those of you who have done uh, uh, much, uh, Central Bank, the functions of uh, Central Bank, they will say the lender of last resort or something like that. That is the last one. And it is not common. Not common. And even the one I told you, it's just because they asked them to, they got to that point. It's now left to that person. Instead of corrupting the church and destroying the church, you know, I told you, discipline is part of the ministry that is very difficult for pastors to do. But you have to do it. I've read passages to you. Rebuke, reproof. Exhort with long suffering. So when we say delivery to when you're cut off from the brethren, cut off from the word of God, word of life, what else? What are you living for? The person may now decide to go and get go to the place where he will listen to what he desires to listen to. And that is what is happening. Many churches today, many preachers. They don't have baboon. Pastor that has gay friend among the choir. Can that person discipline? A friend of mine. We are working together and know you here. In his office, happened to be the head. He just saw a young man. He said, You are too cold today. What's the problem? He's a member of, I don't want to mention him. He said, He told my friend, he said, You see, something happened to me. That my pastor, that we, we I respect. That the younger sister of his wife visited them. And they went to the church together. And they, you don't know, all the people coming for the first time come to the front. And in that church, and they always entertain them. They will give them food. 
and they will write their document and everything. And the pastor was sending text message to that lady. If you right from the first day he attended the, she attended the church, that I want us to be going out together, this and that. The lady, I think he didn't tell them. He went, she went away. And she called the husband, he called her sister and said, this is your pastor you are talking about. If you see all the text messages she has been, she has been sending to me since the first day I attended your church there, the sister said, didn't believe it until they read it out. Can that person discipline? And these are the people where they have sugar coated out. All their prison is just motivation and prison. You know, there may not be a message this morning that we trust out this thing. Is that taken? You are not going beyond the level. And the man was sad. He said, if you see this man, even prayer, <laughs> all these things they have read in, the, in one book, I won't tell you the book, so that will not be advertising their book. This is what you are going to say when you are confronting this. This is what you are going to say when you are confronting that. He said that you will see the whole congregation praying like something. And they will preach sweet message. People like that, do you think that person, you can't preach against the sin you are committing. God is merciful. What happened to Narania and Savera? If it is happening today, I don't know how many preachers will remain alive. That's your situation. That is the life they are living. So if you now cut off, it's like delivering that person to Satan. Because what is sustaining us is the word of life we are carrying on a basis. And the Bible says, the word of God. See what the Bible says in Hebrew. Hebrew. Chapter 4, I read verse 12. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and is a designer of the truth and intent of the arts. If someone is now cut off, what is helping us in deeper life is the word. That we are eating every day. That is what is keep, keeping us. The world is polluted. There are temptations everywhere. Sins are free of church. It is the word of God that is keeping us. My head of the department came to my office on Friday. And he sat down. When he was about to go, he said, Ah, Pastor, what did you put here? And I put here, Flee fornication. Hell is real. I said, It is a message. And I know he got a message there. Fornication is free. As a lecturer, even as a student, gone are the day boys will be pursuing girls. Girls are pursuing men, and boys now. Precious everywhere is the word of life we are hearing that will stray your life. Now, if somebody is cut off from that word, it's like delivering the person to Satan. As communication, it will not happen to you. And uh, it's very rare to happen. Except the one I gave you. It's the same example our region of Asia gave during the leaders' meeting. Is that taking? So that is the interpretation. But Paul the Apostle is not saying that the person we just died and this and that. He still has compassion. He said that our adventure, the source may be removed. And the physical. Flesh is talking about. It's talking about the appetite. Is that taken? Where Bible stop? Let us stop there. Is that taken? See what the Bible says. The Talomi chapter 29, verse 29. The Talomi chapter 29, verse 29. Are you there? When it comes to the Bible interpretation, there's what you call trespass holy land. And on trespass holy land. Look at it in verse 29. The secret things belongs unto the Lord our God. But those things which are revealed belong unto us and to our children forever. That we may do all the words of this law. 
That's why we need to be very careful. You are a child of God. When you are inquisitive. Is there any other discipline after uh, excommunication? Uh -uh. So you want to be want to be a partaker of it. And that is what is happening to many here. When you get to the internet, belong to this association, this group, is free. As you are clicking on this, they'll be telling you do another thing, supply all your data, you supply it. At times they even say if you belong to the first month they are going to give you so social amount of dollar. Go and open domiciliary account and you open it. And lo and behold, you receive a lot. Say, ah, this association is free. Later they begin to tell you, you have to connect 2 a.m. in the in the night. <laughs> and they will ask you to download some audio and some video. And you have them in your laptop before you know it. Initiation is not or courtesy now. Initiation is not done in the bush and forest. Too. Most of the initiations are done on the internet now. And before you know it, you are now meditating. Before you know it, you are not in control of yourself. And that night, when you are connected, you know what is going on. It has happened to about two people. Be careful. Be careful. I'm using this forum to warn you. Christ will come anytime. Live ready. And if you are a worker, you know you are committing sin and we don't know about it. Come out. Come and expose yourself. See what the Bible says in First Timothy. First Timothy chapter 5. Let me even read from verse 20. Very beautiful. Then that sin rebuke before all. Open rebuke. And the Bible says that open rebuke is better than what? Secret love. When it gets to a point that I can rebuke even associate coordinator in the church, I'm not fit to be a pastor there. It's very difficult. I have to do it. Others also may fear. I charge thee before God and the Lord Jesus Christ and the elect angels that thou observe these things without preferring one before another, doing nothing by what? By partiality. When you are disciplined as a leader, no, no, not on the basis of tribalism. I don't like the way that person spoke to my wife and my pastor. I know what I'm going to do. She will pay for it dearly. Is that discipline? God knows the state of your heart when you carry it out. When that sister maybe didn't grip you well, and as a coordinator, I know what I'm going to do. You discipline her. You now be looking for another loophole when the person will make a slight mistake. Go and sit down. I know that you are Kana. You are not fit to be a worker. Go and pray. But God knows that. It's not that because of that. It's because of what has happened before. Without partiality. You know, at times I used to preach there. If, if my wife doesn't dress properly, it means that she's not a model. Not a pattern to follow. That is the scripture. And I told you once, if I come here and I say, well, though we have preached it before, but you see, uh, we are living in a polluted world. Hey! Run to the region of Asia. Tell the region of Asia. Uh, we don't know what happened to this man. It's like he's bending, cutting little by little the standard. God is not a respecter of anybody. Do everything without partiality, without preferring one before another. Look up here. The message is greater than the messenger. And I say, Pastor, when it's something that affects you or something, somebody very close to you, you use ordinary wood, ordinary stick. If it is another person who is not in your good book, you use sledgehammer. That's partiality. 
and God hate it. God hate it. And people in authority who have power to do and undo, they need to be very careful. The motive behind everything we are doing is very, very important. Verse 22. Lay hands suddenly on no man. Neither be partaker of others men sin. Keep thyself what? Pure. Verse 24. Some men sins are open before and going before to judgment. Those are the people who are born again who repented of their sin. Their, your sins have gone ahead. It has been judged. Condemned. You are now justified. But if you are here, you are a worker or you are a member and you cover it up and you are trying to wash the stain in the secret. The more you wash it, the more the, thing, the stain is spreading. The Bible says, and some men their sins follow them after. If you don't find out your sin today, your sin will find you out later. The next person. That is all. If you have any question again, come forward. Come forward. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Yes, that question is still on First Corinthians chapter five, verse five. It's okay. I'm listening to you. To deliver such a one unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh, that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. You've rightly answered to deliver such a one unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh. Now to this that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord. Paradventure, paradventure, the person does what? It's not there. I'm just answering your question because I know where you are going. You feel that the person will be saved eventually later. No. Okay, okay, let me allow you to finish. Go what, ahead. What happened was that a day I was in uh, in Aulawa Hall okay. with one brother here and we were discussing with another person. So the person was telling us that the meaning of this one is that if someone is in, a, is, a, is in a state of sin, a believer that has already passed the dead, that devil will kill, the, that when you deliver him to the devil, the devil will kill that person, that is destruction of the flesh, then the spirit will be saved in the day of the Lord. No. So we actually told him that that is wrong and we tried to expand the scriptures to him. But the correlation of the two now is what I want to, I want to start to help. Say what to you said, now, what that person said. No, 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 I know that that person is strong. Okay, so we corrected him that day and we opened other scriptures. But the balance of the two is okay. The, this, you know, this case is the case of first communication. You understood the first part, it just will destroy the appetite. If the person eventually, because with God, all things are what are possible, and bear it in mind, that is why I took you to the Romans chapter 29. Verse 29. If the person eventually retraces his step back to God, God is merciful. God is what? God is merciful. That is the conclusion of that fast. It's not that Satan will just come, strike the person, and the person will die. In the condition of sin, my brother, and this will back back. And that is why the Bible says, Give no room for the devil. Christ says, The prince of this world comment, and he has nothing in me. So, the essence of that passage is that let the physical appetite may be destroyed, allow him, let him go. Paradventure, if the person repents, the souls, the spirit may be saved. But we are not told because eventually you see the conclusion of the matter. That is for us. Uh, Verse 13. But they that are without, God judge, judge it. Therefore, put away from among yourself that wicked person. That is final. Jesus is now left to him. Why? To preserve the church. To preserve the congregation. In the Old Testament. You know, there is a passage that will not permit us to read it. 
That is in Habakkuk. Habakkuk. I saw it somewhere there. In Habakkuk. Chapter 1, verse 13. Habakkuk 1, verse 13. All these, uh, once you are safe, you are safe forever. That's not from God. If you die in equity, the person will spend eternity in hell. God is not a man. And God will not reduce his standard because of anybody. He soul that sin it. So do what? So die. Habakkuk, chapter 1. Read from verse 13. Habakkuk, chapter 1. Just hold on for me. Read from verse 13. The eyes of God is so pure. And to behold iniquity. I read, thou art of pure eyes that to be holy evil and cannot look on iniquity. That is God. In the Old Testament, just because of children of Israel, they committed wudom. Thousands of people died in the Old Testament. Nada and Abi, because they offer strange fire. Immediately, they died. And Moses told you, know, you can't cry. You better dress up. Can you do that? As a worker. Even if we ask you to stay behind, you have to attend workers' meeting. You know the civil war going on in your heart. For somebody to lose two sons in a day, and they said, you can't cry. You better wash your face and dress up. The service of God must continue. So, if anybody in iniquity that's no problem the person will, you, are, you are free moral agent hell is not by force hell is not by force so if somebody after hearing the truth now went to commit immorality with his wife of his father he said put the, put the person away that wicked person out of the congregation if not sin is contagious a single sinner Destroy much goods. Limit it to that. You hear me, my brother? God bless you. Yes, the next person. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Sir, my question is this I listened to a preacher and he made a statement. I am going to quote him. Yeah? I'm going to quote the preacher what he said. Uh, go ahead. He said, based on his own personal conviction, if a, a preacher or a pastor goes into fornication, that he believes that the preacher can be restored into the kingdom, but the privilege of preaching shouldn't be given to him again. Should not be given to him again. And let me let me see it in a setting like this. I want to find out. Let me say at the level of associate coordinator and above, if a coordinator goes into immorality, as an example, if he's restored, can he still be given the privilege of mounting the pulpit and preaching? Thank you, sir. Where the prisoner you are talking about is a prisoner in deeper life? No, sir. It's okay. Let me start with you first. You see, it, when we are listening to many prisoners, they are going to mislead us. Hearing from this one, hearing from that one, hearing from this one. You must be careful the books that you read. The cassette message that you listen to. The video that you watch. And uh, gradually it's even influencing the way we ministers on the pulpit. You will know this one is, is, as was this particular something. Even when you are leading prayer, we will know. Where you are getting the tone, 
the sty, the prayer points. We need to be very careful, very careful, very careful, very careful. Is that taking? God will help us in Jesus' name. A little poison. If you throw into the water, you are the one calling it little. All the fish there will die. A little poison here, a little poison there. I don't want you to be very careful. Titus chapter 3. Yeah, just by the way, I'm coming to your question. I'm your pastor. And that is part of correction too. Praise the Lord. Chapter 3. And if I stand and 11, Titus 3, verse 10 and 11, a man that is an heretic, after the first and second admonition, rejects, knowing that he that is us is a subverter and seen it being condemned of himself. There are many heretic preachers here and there. We need to be very careful. Be very careful. What you watch, what you listen to, what you hear. And don't be going here and there. We have a lot of program here that can help us. And by the grace of God, we are still going to extend the hand of fellowship. Uh, yesterday, when I was coming to the workers meeting, yeah, was it yesterday? No, not yesterday. The day before yesterday, I was coming. Just God. God just dropped it in my mind to organize campus ministers' conference and to bring all these ministers in other fellowship to come here and have maybe two or three days conference together. What we have, we can give to them. And God will help us to do it in Jesus' name. Now, my brother, another thing I want to correct is this. Not you. We try to attach much weight to fornication. And sin is sin. What about lying? What about being not being straightforward? Hypocrisy. What about deception? You know, as a pastor, you may be you, when they ask you to submit a report and you doctor it. Men, please, sir. So that your superior will say, Ah, thank God. Our brother is doing fine in his group, in his district, in his uh, hall. So, fornication is greater than that. What about your unfaithfulness when you are feeling for? So that they will not take much of tax from your income. And you say, Well, I have, uh, he has four children. Who, he said, I put two there. I asked one child, he put four there. Fornication is greater than that. When you are feeling boss, boss for do you have father? You put no there. Do you have more? You put no there. How much do you receive on monthly basis? And they used to send 20,000 to you. You put 5,000 there. Fornication is greater than that. Sin is sin. Whether big or small. You remember the testimony of Pastor Abraham. About that man who had been serving God for good 36 years. And just because of anger. No wonder. The Bible says in the book of Proverbs, Thou shalt not walk with an angry man. And the angel was unhappy. Why? Why did you not allow the blood of Christ to cleanse this anger? He said it was Satan. If you see Satan, can you say it in his presence? According to the testimony, and the man just, the angel did like this, and Satan appeared. Put on a cloth, red and black. And the Satan asked him, the day that I didn't allow you to be delivered from hunger, I have many dresses. Which one did I put on? You see the one I'm putting on now. And the man will say, hey, hey, hey. And Satan disappear. And the angel said, depart. 
anger. Hey, you are the testimony of that woman. We saw money in the pocket of her husband. Though the man was not faithful, man treating her, always be on daily basis. And she used the money to prepare food. He ate, the husband ate, the children ate, not for an outsider. Just because of that, unclean thing cannot enter. No, no. I'm giving you all this illustration to point to you because at times we try to put at as much weight to fornication. Sin is sin. The soul that sinned shall die. Moses. God said, You didn't honor me. When he got here, he said, You rebels, he has water. Are they not rebels? They were rebels. But God was not looking at them as rebels. So he didn't honor me. Come. He took him to the mountain top. Look at the promised land. You can get there. In the book of Jude, just because of that single heart, thank God, Moses repented. In fact, there was a time he, time he pleaded with God. And God said, I've closed that chapter. Do you know what we are going to do? Take Joshua. And don't do it in the secret. Before the congregation anoint him. And tell them, this is your new leader. When the assistant leader was alive, can you do it? That's meekness of her. Holiness of her. Moses didn't get there and say, well, God asked me to do it. And I prayed. He didn't answer my prayer. He asked me to tell you that uh, uh, Joshua is now your leader. Joshua, come forward. Why are you sluggish? He did it. That is what you call holiness of life. And just because of that art in the book of Jude, we are told that Satan contented with the archangel over the body of Christ. Satan was saying, just because of that, it's my property. He must go to hell. Fornication. Sin is sin. Now, that is just preamble. Praise the Lord to answer your question. My brother, I am not God. All the priests that you see, priests of holiness, I'm not talking about other, they are not God. And let me tell you, someone needs to be very careful. As you are climbing the ladder, if you cut a small tree and the tree falls down, nobody will hear about it, about the fall of that tree. Am I right? But if you cut down a local tree who have been existing for long years, that local tree alone will not fall. <laughs> it's going to pull down other small, small trees along. Am I right? And people will hear the fall of that big tree. When you are climbing the ladder in the ministry, the more you pray for more humility, more grace of God. But by the time you, the person descend, uh, it will affect other people in the congregation. Because there are some people who are looking up unto him as a model. They thank God for a pastor. We love him. And therefore, we quench the fire in the heart of many people. That is why, as a leader, coordinator, horeb, workers in the church, the members are looking at us. And you members, outsiders there, they are looking at you. They may not talk. So that is why someone needs to be very careful. And if you are given privilege to be a pastor, somebody fell into sin, any sin, forget about immorality. Or let's even say immorality. Christ says, pray and wash. And the Bible says, resist the devil and he will flee from you. Be sober. Be vigilant. Because of your adversary, Satan, roaring like a lion, seeking for whom to defer. Paul the apostle says, he said, I keep my, myself, my body under, so that after I preach to other people, I myself will not be lost. We are the one need to be very careful. If it happen, and it can happen, I pray it will not happen to you. 
and it will not happen to me. Mistakenly, the person gives room for the devil. And it comes in a subtle way. And no lady that sister coming to you for counseling. Another day, coming for why can't you direct her to your wife? There are some men who fail as a result of help. Your wife is not with you, and they brought somebody, the daughter of our pastor, so so place. He has just secured something. He will stay in your house. Tentatively, we she will get accommodation. First week, as the one that will prepare your food, you are going gradually. Do you even know whether that person is born again? Mommy, what a lady. Who has familiar spirit? And the person will seduce you. And it does not start just in a day, it's gradually. And those who employ people, all the people from Kutono, from Benue, to do housemaid. Your wife cannot set your food on the table now. It's the maid that will set the food on the table for you. You are going gradually. Just in a subtle way. And the lust will develop like a mustard seed. And it will be growing gradually onto consumation. If it happens, the person should go and pray. It all depends on the leading of the Spirit of God. Whether to give the person pulpit assignment or not. If God leads the person and after restoration, the person genuinely repented. You want her to want him to go to hell. Service continue. The person may be restored and pulpits can be given to that person. That is why I told you, you don't look at that person as if that thing, that sin he committed is he there. You are not God. All of us, we are living by the grace of God. Peter. He came to him. He said, you are one of them. He said, who? Oh, I don't know him. Even when that image came to him, I said, ah, even the way you talk betray you. He said, well, I don't know him. And he started cursing. If I know him, let this one happen. If I know him, let this. Ah, ah. I said, I don't know him. The third time, Remember, he was following Christ afar off. When you begin to miss Bible study, revive our workers' meeting, holiness is not relevant. You argue with the word of God. And for some who are saying that they are under bondage, any day they want to do their marriage, go and do it. You are following the Lord afar off. It's even the content of your heart that you are not born again before. And he looked at Christ. Christ looked at him. Ice ball to ice ball. The Bible says that he wept bitterly and cried. Are you telling me that that one is a lesser sin compared to fornication? And he got to a point. I remember before that time, Jesus Christ called Peter. He said, Peter, son of Judah, Satan desired to have you, to sift you like a wheat. But I pray for you when you are comforted, strengthen thy brethren. When they heard that Christ was buried, this and that, he has resurrected. Eventually, he told the people, he said, I go out fishing. About other six or seven that were with him at that time, I said, oh, uh, Peter, we don't have any alternative. We are following you. And he went. And Christ came, a fully visitation. He said, Children, do you have meat? If you are the one, if anybody does that on the pulpit of the power life, I say, who is Jesus? I don't know Jesus. Are you one of the, are you not, you are the one preaching that Jesus is the Savior. I'm not the one. No. What do you think the church is going to do for that person, my brother? I don't know. Maybe it's communication. Jesus Christ even met their need first. And he said, Peter, Love and thou me more than this. The first time, feed my sheep. He said, I love you. Peter, love and thou me more than this. He said, I love you. Feed my lamb. Peter, love and thou me more than this. He broke down. You deny me three times, and I need to ask you that question three times. I pray that we will love like Christ, we will live like Christ. 
and we will lead like Christ. After discipline, whatever the saint may be. And the person is now restored. All those past life, past deed, Christ has wiped them away. The same has gone to judgment, to the, to the cross. It has been judged. You see the person as a new creature. Give him the assignment. Let him continue to expand the kingdom of God. And Peter continued. We should not put ourselves in the position of God. That is why, you see, it, it can happen to anybody. If the person is restored, give the assignment back. Let him continue. High do hand is the workshop of the devil. And we should not put ourselves in the position of God. However, the leading of the spirit he may decide, okay, you are not, look, this is the assignment we are giving you. Let him take it. You know the assignment that can be given to anybody just to test the humility of that individual and to test the genuineness of the repentance. And when God is doing it, the congregation will not say, ah, ah, it was our house coordinator before. Why should they now make me, uh, uh, I don't even know. The organogram in TSF is a little bit tactical. He was a group coordinator before. Why should you now make him to be the sonar leader? Uh -uh. If I thought they want to punish him, they should make him district coordinator. God says, my way is not your way. And God will not come down and say, this is what I want you to do. He will use his servant, his leader, to effect it. So, my brother, it is possible because you are not God. We are not God. He has repented. He is now a child of God. That is why as a believer in the church, when somebody is disciplined and the person is now restored, don't look at him with the former heart or if he committed before. He is now a child of God. Even who am I? To even stand here on the pulpit to preach, if not because of Christ. A Muslim. I know some passages that I will get to attack Christian. And I'm now the one preaching the gospel. If not because of the mercies of God. You just said that to ask a question. Will you be alive? Do you think I'll be alive? Holding the Bible? Preaching. And I've worked against this Bible before. I've lived dirty life before. Stranger to the throne of grace. If not because of mercy. I will not, not now have mercy on that person. Because I'm a pastor. It can happen. If it happened and the person eventually restored, give him assignment. And God works in a diverse way. Uh, let me say this. You see, I'm a learner. I'm learning. And anything I'm doing here, God is guiding me to do it. I rebuked our leaders yesterday. And I was glad when some of them came with humility, with soberness. And inside my heart, I said, no, these people, are, they, they are ready for heaven. The former, former state of Asia, in your state, I think it's now in uh, Russia. He just came to leaders' meeting. And pastor said, where is Brother so and so? Not in the church. It's okay. Leave whatever you are doing. Go and pray. Maybe after three months, he now restore him. And the brother said, Pastor, you are the one that gave me an assignment. That is why I was not there. You told me to go and do this and do this. He said, Pastor, say, eh? That is what you call test of humility. I said, it's okay. I think the following month or following week, you are no more a coordinator here. You are not state of us here in your state. I pray you will not fail your own test. I heard about a founder of a church who disciplined his own jacketry and at the point of death he was restored. It is possible to discipline you wrongly. God may allow it deliberately to bring out something out of you. And for even the person who disciplined you to learn something. And when God is doing it, it may be painful but the result is always pleasant. It always leads to promotion and ministry. 
And God spoke to him. That man. That you did me so so tired. And with humility he took it kindly. That is the person who is going to replace you. I don't want to mention the name of the church. That is how God works. In error you can even be disciplined. For what you don't even know anything about. Have you heard about pray high? A notable prayer warrior. His sister came to stay with him. And there are some people, you know, they, when you don't have information to carry, say that we give you one. Carry the information to the leader. He said, Ah, we saw a lead point, Brian, Pastor, and so and so. He did this one, he did that one. And they put him on discipline without investigation. For years, later they now discover that he's the younger sister. Say, Ah. And they brought him. Say, we are sorry. He said, Don't say sorry. There's something that you will not learn when I'm active in the ministry that I'm supposed to learn when I'm out of the ministry. You have not done anything wrong. That is Christianity. Can you do that? Just a little bit. You pull for. Even your physique is speaking to your leader. I don't accept what you said. Hey, don't allow sentiment in your heart. Let allow God to have his way in whatever we are doing. And let him allow him to take residence of our life. The coming of Christ is imminent. Don't allow little, little thing, little, little thing, little, little thing. And as a pastor, if I see something wrong, if I keep quiet, God is going to judge me. That's what he called the word of wisdom. The way it manifests freely. At times, maybe when you are praying, Word of wisdom and word of knowledge, two of them always work together. And during the minister's conference, you have the booklet with you, go and read it. As times you are praying, you say, so, and God will give you the description, everything. Someone is there, this and this. If I know, if I heard of a pastor, if he will tell you the, your street and the number of your house. I'm not talking a congregation, small congregation like this. Big congregation. But at times, it may be when you are preaching. And it's as if maybe pastor, someone has reported you to the pastor. And everything that you are doing, everything, you will know the word of God will just be revealing it. Clearly. But if you don't take it calmly and say, God, I thank you. And we have many people here. You will be thinking, God, pastor is take, talking about you. Maybe there's another person there, another person there, another person there. That is why you don't take offense. You receive the totality of the word of God and say, God, go ahead. I make clear. You are the potter. Work on me. God will help us in Jesus' name. In I don't know whether I've answered your question, my brother. Sir, my question is on some special types of discipline. Special types of discipline. It's okay. Um, there's some that will be the last question. What we need to collect offering. And I want our chorister to minister to us too. Praise the Lord. There are some cases that happen like maybe the daughter committed a sin and daughter father, like yes. okay. So the father is disciplined for the child, or the wife committed something bad and the husband is disciplined. I want to understand the law actually government. Like is it really biblical or I don't really understand because some things happened where I came from. Uh, the son committed sin and the father highly pleased was disciplined. The child committed it again and he was disciplined. What is the age of that child? Alice is to the best of my age is an undergraduate like Alice above 18 child. <coughs> Where is he? Is he in the university now or in secondary school? It's, it's above secondary school. It's above secondary, eh? it's above secondary school. Above secondary school. But he's still under the control of the parent. Yes, collecting sir. money. To buy food. I wouldn't really know. Would Is he know. working? No. He's not working. Okay. Don't worry. Go ahead. So, in cases like that, and even the other, the other one, like the child is a worker also, the father is a worker, and the child committed an offense, and the father also be disciplined for the child, and other things like that. It's okay. Thank you. God bless you. <clears throat> 
Turn your Bible with me to First Samuel chapter. First Samuel chapter two. I read from verse two. Now, the sons of Eli were sons of Belia. They knew not the Lord. Their children's sons of Belial. They knew not the Lord. And yet, you know, look up everybody. There are a lot of things to learn from these things we are talking about. Maybe before I analyze that, let me read for them. First 17, wherefore, the sin of the young man, men, were very great before the Lord. For men are the offering of the Lord. Verse 22. Now, he lie was very old and had all that his sons did unto all Israel and how they lay with the women that assembled at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And he said unto them, Why do ye such things? For I hear of your evil doings. By all these people, nay, my sons. But it's no good report that I hear. He make the lost people to transgress. If any man sin against another, the judge shall judge him. But if a man sin against the Lord, who shall entreat for him? Notwithstanding, they are not unto the voice of their father, because the Lord will slay them. Chapter 3. I read verse 12. In that day, I will perform against Eli all things which are spoken concerning his house when I begin. And I will also make an end. Verse 13. For I have told him that I will judge his house forever for the iniquity. Underline this phrase. Which he knoweth. Underline that three words. Because his sons made themselves vain and he restrained them not. Underline that phrase. And he refrained them not. Look up. Here. Samuel was a minister. The first error I discovered here is this. We are told in chapter 2, verse 12. Now the son of Eli were sons of Bela. They know not the Lord. Since they don't know God, they are supposed not to be put in leadership position in the synagogue. That's the first thing. And we need to learn from that. My son knows how to play organ. Fine. My, own, my daughters can sing. Is that such daughter born again? Is that son born again? But because his father has his father time in playing instrument and dress like deeper life. You are a worker. Go ahead. Leopard cannot change his skin. The old man is still there. It will manifest. Can you imagine? He like committed sacred thing to the hand of his sons. And he knows, he knew it, that dead people, they knew not the law. That's the first thing. The second one, he had opportunity. You see the way he was even talking. Jelly like, jelly fish talking. I heard what you are doing. This thing is not good, my son. It was another person. He will place that person on discipline. They should be far away. From collecting sacrifice, standing on behalf of the children of Israel. He didn't do it. Even when the atrocity came, he didn't say anything. And see what the Bible say. The Bible said that he knew. For he knew it. And he restrained them not. This is what the Holy Ghost penned down. You can't change it. And because of that, when discipline came, not on the sons alone, upon his head too. God cannot lower the standard because of anybody. Take that from me. And if you are parents today, you gloss over whatever your son or your daughter does. They will change. 
the psychologists, they taught us that we should not clean them, we should not do anything. And that's what they told them in the children's church. And those of you in the children's church, you are hearing my voice. I'm not saying you should clean other children, but my own children are there. If they misbehave, bring that person out, that child out. Get a BK, if possible, but commensurate to the age. And be that child. I give you that liberty. And that is what is killing us in our church. He's the son of Rudy of Asia. Special treatment for them. And they are decaying spiritually. He's the son of special privilege. That was a day. We should respect our leader. Please don't misinterpret what I'm saying. I just came newly. Brother said, You will remember. I just came. No, I was new. I was just receiving a call from Abuja, receiving a call from uh, Benny, and uh, somebody is coming. And it was the beginning of the session. And uh, from uh, the daughter, the son of our overseer, I don't want to mention the place, he's coming. This and that. And uh, I said, Bro, so he also went out to receive call, this and that. Eventually, the person came. To me, I thought a fresher. Jambite. So I brought him to the office. They said we should look for accommodation for him, this and that. So when I sat down, and I called Brother Jerry, it was a GC there. I said, Bro, this is the son of our state of Asia from so place. He's a new student. GC look at him. He said, He's, a pastor. He's not a new student, he's a final year student. Are you sure? Final year? And I talked to him. I said, Ah, excuse me. You didn't register for accommodation online. He said that I didn't do it. Ah. I looked up and down. I didn't even enjoy the message, the service, because I was going out, coming in. The son of Asia is coming. I said, by the way, are you a worker? He said, I'm not a worker. I was a worker before, but when I came here, they asked me that I would do the discipleship training or pastor, or pastor class. So since I can, I said, did you bring any letter to show us that you are a worker from where you are coming? Uh, he said no. I look at it. At times we pamper them. Me, I don't, I don't. There's no room for that. When I was here as an undergraduate student, uh -uh. even my own room, final year, I gave it to the jambite who are coming. Special treatment. No, I need to obey my religion of Asia. They gave him a special something. That is how we are killing the children of leaders. Go to the LSO. They will do visitation to the outsiders. But once they know this son, this, this brother, this, uh, this boy, this girl is the son of a leader in the church, they won't bother to do visitation to that person. And that is where we are missing it. Those are preamble to answer your question. Now. Here, we see the case, the parent neglected our responsi his responsibility, Eli. When discipline came, it came upon the children and came upon him. Is that taken? Now, if you are a graduate, you have left the university, you are working. You are not under the control of your father or mother again. You can fence for yourself. If you are wayward, you will be disciplined. Your father and your mother will not be disciplined. I remember G.S. preached a message because there are some people, deliberately they are doing that now in the church. When we say, hey, Daddy, I know what I'm going to do. If your wife are doing it, you will see the wife go a wire to worthiness. They will say, by the time I'm, <laughs> I decide to do that, pastor will discipline you. This Bible you are carrying, not in this house. Pastor said, we won't discipline your husband though. If you want to go to where, go to where alone. And you children also, if you decide to go wayward, thinking that if you go wayward, we will discipline your parents, we won't discipline your parents. How many of you had that Monday Bible study? God bless you. How much more if that child is now on his own, on her own, graduate, you are working. Even before marriage, if you go into, oh, you, now, you are not even married, you are on your own. Every is personal. The Bible says each one of us are give account of himself unto God. And let me tell you, salvation is not transferable. For the fact that your father or your mother is a pastor or an ufasia or a founder of a church does not mean that you are born again. 
So, my brother, it all depends. But if a parent is negligent in her duty or in his duty, we just gloss over everything. And we know when we discipline both of them. But if we know that is, but if the child has three D is, is independent, go and do whatever you want to do. Discipline your parent. And all of you here who are students, you are not independent because you know how you are collecting money from your parents. They are the one feeding you. Or can you feed yourself? In consumption, the consumption is divided into two. We have autonomous and consumption that depend on income. Are you having an income? Your own consumption form, form come under autonomous that does not depend on income. The one that depend on income, that's what they call marginal propensity to do what? Answer me now. To consume. And it's also less than what? Less than one. And if you have marginal concern, propensity to consume with marginal propensity to save, it will give you what? One. Praise the Lord. So, now, because you may be thinking that, ah, thank God, pastor said those who are independent. Since I'm not independent, I will do something so that I will even do it to the extent that I will go and show it to religion of Asia. So religion of Asia will discipline my father. Now lie. We won't discipline your father. You, you have read the age of accountability. You know the difference between good and bad. You say you are, you, are, you, you, say you are not mature. You are born again. Sanctify. You know how to pray for Holy Ghost baptism. If you are eating, you know where you put the food. Praise the Lord. So yeah, at this age, all of you that are here, I pray it will not happen to you. If anybody decides to go wayward, nobody will discipline your parent. You have power, ability to say this is where I'm going. You choose Hobart Femi Awolewa University. When you are preparing for UME, you knew the time to come here to receive lecture. And you know how to write exam. You know how to aim first class. And you are praying for the will of God. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So, at this stage, forget about it. If you have a child in secondary school, and people know, even the member of the church know, that this the father and the mother will never take nonsense. It's only that this child just stubborn and decided to be wayward. If that child will say wayward, nobody will discipline the father and mother. And when we talk about the age of accountability, the moment you are able to discern between good and bad, at least from the age of seven, when you are still under control. Second is still under control. But if the parent they know that uh, I won't be gone, I want your lower. When discipline is coming, you come upon that child and come upon the parent. Have I answered your question, my brother? Who is that person? Have I answered you? Are you clear? Yes, sir. God bless you. This is where we are going to stop. Praise the Lord. I believe God has blessed the church. This is one church. We are really truth here. Abide. Stay put. Don't go away. And it's happy where we tune in Jesus' name.